Human Impact, the iPad Equation. What is the iPad Equation? What are the assumptions within it? And what opportunities to reduce impact does it reveal? These are the questions that we'll be looking at in this video. In the early 1970s, scientists in the United States were attempting to calculate the impact of humans on the environment. One of the methods proposed by Ehrlich and Holdren is called the iPad equation. In this equation, the environmental impact was proposed to be a product of the population, the affluence of the population, and the technology. Let's look more closely at this model. The mental model presumes that each person represents a consumer of economic goods and services. The affluence term represents the economic goods and services that are able to be consumed per person. The technology term represents the pollutants emitted per economic good or service consumed. One line of reasoning that arose from the iPad equation was that countries of large populations, such as China and India, who together comprise more than a third of the world's people, are the countries with largest negative impact. However, the affluence term has proved to be far more important. For example, wealthier countries have five times the ecological footprint than developing countries have. A simplified way of strategizing to reduce the impact would be to manipulate the terms on the right-hand side of the equation. However, in some cases, there are serious ethical considerations in doing this. For example, it is clear that reducing the population would decrease the impact. But manipulating individuals' reproductive rights or deciding to end the lives of people are serious moral infractions. As a technologist, the term in the iPad equation that makes most sense as an intervention point is the technology term. Within the technology term, we have the opportunity of developing products and services that have a much reduced impact throughout the life cycle. This is encouraging, but gains in efficiency of a particular process are mathematically bound by the laws of thermodynamics. That is, you can't get a process that is more than 100% energy efficient. So the impact per technology term has limits within a particular technology. What else can be done? One way to create more options for high impact interventions is to expand the boundaries of the problem. In this image, we use the notation of causal loop diagrams to show how the iPad variables are influenced by a number of other variables. Each arrow shows a causal connection. For example, sustainable development in a society is correlated with greater gender equity, which leads to lower birth rates and reduced population. While technology efficiency is limited by the laws of thermodynamics, things like gender equity, literacy, art, ethics, spirituality are not mathematically limited. These areas of intervention do not necessarily require new investments of energy or materials, but do require an attention to the human influences of the system behavior. One of the dangers of viewing the system this way is in assuming that people are objects that can be manipulated to produce a desired sustainable effect. In this scenario, the designer is using people to achieve an outcome. An alternative is to create partnerships where people can work together to choose their shared destiny. Participatory action methods of design are in the spirit of creating shared outcomes through individually and collectively chosen actions. The iPad equation is a simple way of conceptualizing the environmental impact of a human population and its lifestyle. It represents humans as consumers whose impact is a product of their affluence and the pollution associated with the technology to support their consumption. The iPad reveals that opportunities to reduce impact come from both technology and many other interventions that influence population affluence and technology. These interventions call for participatory action towards shared aspirations.